Hi guys, it's me Marcin. Uh, happy to be back quickly after our uh, live uh, stream. And I had an idea, I got an idea on the live stream. Some of you asked me about frequency separation and I believe it might be quite messy uh, in the live stream. So I wanted to create separate lesson uh, right now about frequency separation to show you uh, what should you avoid, why frequency separation might be harming for your image, why sometimes you should avoid this. And if you don't want to avoid how to work with frequency separation, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube and forget them because they are wrong. They teach you bad habits. They show you how to work destructively on the image. You want to work non-destructively. So I will try to show you as much as I can how to work without harming your image. Uh, for those who don't know, frequency separation is the process when we split the image for two different layers. Many people say we split for color and texture. It's not necessarily true because uh, we not uh, split for color and texture because on the asset texture there's still some color existing so it's not 100% true but we can say like this we split for color and texture just to uh, remember this easily so what we need to do we need to uh, duplicate our background layer and one layer i'm going to call low as a low frequency and the other layer i'm uh, going to call as a high frequency uh, so let's start with the low layer. As I said, it will be so-called colors. Uh, so I need to blur out the details of the image. I don't want to see all of the small hair and uh, the small uh, spots. So I'm going to blur this till the level. It will sort of disappear. So I'm going to uh, filter, uh, blur and Gaussian blur. Remember that the value will be always different depends on the image you work. My image has quite big size so the radius will be uh, somewhere between 15 or 20 as it's it's really high in this case I would go with 18 maybe so I blurred out some of the details I don't see but if you have smaller size of the image of course it will be maybe around 8 around 10 etc. So I'm hitting OK and my low layer is sorted. So I don't see the details and now I'm going into high layer and I will want to work with the details. To work with high layer, I'm going to image and then apply image. And it depends on uh, the image you work with. I work with uh, the 16-bit image, which is always better. If you work with RAW, export this into a TIFF file, you will have 16-bit image, it has more information. So for the layer, I want to set low because it's um, somehow getting the information from the low layer to exclude them in the high layer. And the blending for 16-bit image always will be add, scale to, offset zero, and then this invert box selected. If you work with 8-bit image, you would go with subtract uh, scale 128 and this would be not selected. Okay, I'm working with 16 bits, so I will have uh, these values. And as many people said that uh, top layer is the texture and low layer is colors, and how to prove it's not necessarily the true, as you can see, looking at this layer, we can actually distinguish some color. I can see some color on her lips, around her nose, and on the eyes. So this is the first proof that actually uh, the common saying that we split for color and texture um, it's just a lie. It's not true. But uh, it doesn't matter really much uh, because it's all about the final results. So this high layer we need to change into, uh, let me find, linear light. And now I'm going to put this into the group. And I'm going to call the group FS as frequency separation. To put this into the group, I'm just selecting both using command. Uh, and then I'm pressing Command or Control and G, and then it's landing into the group. So, okay, you can see when I'm uh, deselecting and selecting the layer, the colors are exactly the same. And the reason why, because we split this uh, image into two separate layers, and the two separate layers contains exactly the same information as our background layer. And here will be all of the fun, how to work with um, how to work with frequency separation in non-destructive way. First of all, you want to avoid working on the low frequency and more likely all of the job you will do in high frequency layer. So the job you're going to do, you're going to work with 
uh, clone stamp and to remove all of the spots you better work with hard edge and brush and exactly the same as I would work on empty layer I would work change here into current layer because we work on the current layer and all of the spots I need to remove I'm just removing using hard edged clone stamp so uh, give me a few seconds for doing this uh, remember that uh, frequency separation doesn't resolve all of the process and after that you have to do dodge and burn. So that's how I work, hard edged brush and I'm removing uh, the spots. And the second step in this process would be criticized by many. But I don't care about many people opinions and I do what works for me. Uh, and you should do the same. Don't listen when someone say you... Um, because I know retouchers who use frequency separation. I know who doesn't use. I personally don't use frequency separation uh, in my workflow. Uh, but I know how to use. I used to use this. And if someone tell you, oh, you just do horrible work. You cannot use frequency separation. Don't, don't listen to them. Uh, the final results are important. Uh, and this is just big heads thinking they stole all of the all of the minds. Uh, I know even professional retouchers talking the same this way, and it's just not very nice way of saying. Uh, the community tends to be quite childish. Uh, frequency separation is super powerful for sorting out the hair, as here. You don't have to really pay much attention to what you do. You just paint over the hair, and the result will be great. And it's much easier to do this than working on the uh, empty layer as you can see it would be better for me to do this with soft edged brush on the hair so if you work with the hair just use soft edged brush I just don't want to spend too much time on this lesson don't want to make you bored so okay let me do some more cleaning and um, what's powerful about this we can really sort out nicely the hair so uh, with the empty layer over here for example I would have to um, what I would have to do, I would have to use empty layer, soft edged uh, clone stamp and just even out the skin texture over here. But as you can see with frequency separation, it's going quite easily. So the thing I mentioned that I would be criticized by many is I like to change the hardness into soft one. And when I have very rough skin texture, this image doesn't have uh, the rough skin texture. I don't have image which could represent this. But look, we have some of this ugly hair over here. I would go with this soft edged brush and like really softly try to even this out. And uh, yeah, you could say the same as many would say, oh, you cannot do this because you destroy the natural skin texture. But my answer is, uh, well, I need to do this a little bit because these hair are too much. I see them too much. I don't want to see them that much. That's what I'm doing this. If you don't want to have that harsh skin texture, that that's the reason why you can use um, this technique. Of course, I would have to go over here a little uh, to remove this hair. And as you can see, that could nicely uh, even this out. Soft edged brush. So this is the, the one way I like frequency separation is this when I really need uh, to even out the skin texture. Uh, it, it happens and I can guarantee you I have the images that I used this and no one would say I used a frequency separation. Uh, because there's many other things you do. You can uh, recover texture, you add in noise at the end. All of these things uh, lead into being the lack of texture not visible okay as you can see over here I would even out this hair a little so it's super powerful and uh, the second option that um, I don't like and I think you should avoid this as much as you can is working on the low frequency but I will show you if you have to I know like not all of you is professional retouchers you don't need to work two hours but some of you is photographers and just want to save some time and get a fairly good result. So let's go into low layer if you have to work with this. I would duplicate low layer 
and this uh, duplicated, I press Control and hit on this, and I will convert this to Smart Object. I'm converting this to Smart Object because thanks to this, I will have full control on the um, blur adjustments I'm going to apply into this layer. So if the blur will be too strong, I can change this anytime. Uh, so once I have this uh, smart object, I'm going to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And let me zoom this into the face. What I want to achieve with Gaussian blur, the perfect Gaussian blur will be when I will be looking at the face and I will see the tones uh, um, event out a little bit, but with some control. Like, I'm going up a little bit, you see uh, the tones are even out, they are smoothing out, uh, but I don't want to go over here because it's absolutely blown out. So I would go uh, around 30, which is quite soft. A little, just some smooth. Hit OK. And of course, I don't want this all layer look like this. So what I do, I hit the small icon on the bottom to create layer mask. And remember, layer mask, everything what's white is visible. If you invert this into black, for example, using Command or Control and I, it becomes invisible. White, visible, black, invisible. So we want to bring visibility just on the certain areas. For this, we will be using just a brush, regular brush. Flow I'm going to put at 100. And we will be painting on this layer mask with white color, just in the areas that we want to smooth out, where we want to uh, smooth out the tones. So here I had some irregular tones. I would go, uh, of course, uh, near here. The tones are quite irregular, which I don't like. So I would paint with the white color just around these areas. Remember to be really careful not to go too close edges because uh, you're going to blow out uh, the shadows which uh, going to destroy perspective of the image. You don't want to destroy the perspective. You want the image to have still 3D perspective. You don't want to flatten this. So yeah, short work before, after. We have to really zoom in. I will show you this before, after. That's how you should work with frequency separation. I believed I showed you most effective way as quick as I could possible, what's the right way of working with frequency separation, what you should uh, be aware of, why you should be careful to not ruin your image. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope I will be coming soon with uh, new tutorials and new live streams. Uh, probably take me a while because I'm going for holiday on Friday. Um, so uh, see you soon after that. Let me know what you think about this uh, tutorial and stay in touch. Thank you.